everyone and welcome to our video devotional series. Uh, in this video devotional series, we're going to be looking at some of the one another verses in the Bible as a supplement to our current sermon series on church. The way that these devotionals are going to be structured is that each day there might be a bit of an intro to the passage with an idea and some context given. Uh, then the passage will be read through twice. The words will appear on the screen. It might be helpful to read along with the reading the first time through. But then the second reading will be a bit slower with some pauses to allow you to run what you just heard back over in your mind and think about what verses stand out and ask the question, what is God highlighting to you from the passage? It might be helpful during the second time through to close your eyes as you listen to it read. After the Bible reading, I will give you a short moment to stop and think or write down what stood out to you. Then there may be a few comments or thoughts from me, but the majority of the time after the reading, uh, I'll spend time with someone from NEAC asking them some really practical questions about the one another verses in particular. And it is my hope and prayer that this will be really encouraging to you before we end each day in prayer. Having said all of that, let's get into today's devotional, which will look a little different because our passage for today is John 15, 1 to 8, which doesn't have a one another statement in it. The verses that come after it do, and we'll be looking at them tomorrow, but the reason that uh, we're looking at these verses in particular today is because they lay the foundation for the idea of one anothering. Our horizontal relationship with one another flows out of the vertical relationship that we have with God. And these verses pick up on that vertical relationship. Uh, so it's that relationship with God that we're going to focus on today to set the stage for thinking about our horizontal relationships with one another in all the rest of the devotionals. Uh, so as we read John chapter 15 verses 1 to 8, let me pray for us. Our good and gracious God, as we come to your word today, Open our hearts and our minds to receive your word and be challenged and changed by it as your spirit works within us. And Lord, we pray that through this we might bring you glory and honour. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. John 15, 1-8 I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. John 15, 1-8 I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. 
You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. We'll take a moment, think or write down what verse or verses stood out to you and why. Now I've asked Danny, who attends ERCO, to join me today to help us think through these verses in John 15. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us, Danny. Thanks for having me. I was wondering, would you be able to share with us some thoughts that you might have from John 15 about what it means to remain in Jesus, the true vine, and practically what has that looked like for you or what might it look like for us to remain in Jesus, the true vine? Yeah, I um, as I was reading the passage, I was struck by how significant that emphasis on remaining in the vine, remaining in the vine is throughout it. I mean, it comes up six or seven times in eight verses. Um, and Jesus seems to be telling his disciples to take this seriously, uh, that they need to remain in him, which made me then think, well, he's saying that because there's a serious possibility that they won't remain in him. Um, and so I, I think the question of what does it mean to remain in Jesus is a really significant one because um, clearly it's something that Jesus takes very seriously um, and has serious consequences if we don't. You know, it talks about the branch withering and being thrown away. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the importance of remaining in him is really very clear. I guess the question is what? what does it mean to remain in Jesus? Uh, I was thinking about it. I was rereading the passage and um, I'm not a gardener. So much to my father and grandmother's chagrin. So I know nothing about the grafting and the, all sorts of things that happen, but I was thinking about a branch with a vine. Um, and it, it occurred to me how beautiful that illustration really is, this vine illustration, because the vine is the life source of the branch. The vine is where the branch is given its nutrients, where it's nourished, where it's given the water it needs in order for it to be able to grow. Um, and so I was reflecting on that and thinking, well, what does it mean to remain me in the vine, Jesus? And I think it is that sense in which we're called to uh, find our nourishment in him, find out he is our life source. Um, uh, he is what enables us to grow. Uh, and, um, you know, there's a number of references to his word in the passage and uh, that seems to be um, a clear way in which we remain in him and grow. Um, but there was also a great comfort in the passage too. This, you know, So we've got on one hand this sense in which we have to intentionally seek to remain in Jesus. It's really important that we proactively apply ourselves to this. But on a number of occasions when Jesus says, remain in me, he follows it up immediately with, as I remain in you, or as my word remains in you. Um, and there's a great comfort there, I think, because it shows us that 
the way that we remain in Jesus is actually because he remains in us. My, my fuel for remaining in Jesus is actually Jesus at work in me. Um, so we get that paradox, don't we, of intentionally pursuing this, but knowing our strength to do that comes from Jesus himself. So the passage seems to suggest, yeah, that being connected to Jesus, the true vine, so having that vertical relationship with God then is, starts to work out on a horizontal level in bearing fruit. Um, mm. So you've kind of already answered, like, to what extent is that fruit bearing God's work or our own effort? Um, and what do you think he's actually referring to when he's speaking about this fruit? Yeah. Um, it's another challenge. I think I was looking at verse 8 again. Um, this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples, that actually fruit bearing as Christians isn't just kind of an optional extra. You know, it's not just a nice to have element of the Christian life. It's actually a demonstration that we are Christians, that we are Jesus' disciples. Um, and so again, there's, you know, in this lovely flourishing gardening illustration, there's another real challenge and exhortation in that, I think, um, that Bearing fruit is something that we are to proactively pursue um, as Christians and that's what the branch is intended to do. The branch is intended to bear fruit um, as it's connected to the vine. Um, but again, we see that real paradox that it's up to us to bear the fruit but that it's the vine that nourishes us to do that. And, in fact, um, verse there's a beautiful promise in verse, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Uh, and so we've got this promise that remaining in Jesus as he remains in us means that we will be fruitful um, because it's God who does it. Uh, but um, what is the fruit? Um, well, uh, it, it is the demonstration that we're, we're Jesus' people in this world um, and uh you know, seems to have a very horizontal access, doesn't it? Seems to have very much um, a sense in which the way that we relate uh, is part of how we bear fruit. Um, anyway, there's lots of other Bible passages that have a lot more to say about what that fruit actually looks like. Yep. Mm -hmm. And would you be happy to share one example of how you've seen that fruit, yeah, in your own life? Yeah, so you... um. You keyed me in that this was going to be a question that we we're going to talk about. So I've been mulling over it um, and I've really struggled to know how to answer this well. Uh, I was trying to work out why I was struggling so much to identify, you know, just one example of fruitfulness. And I could probably give you a fairly trivial example or something like that. Um, but what I really wanted to work out was why I was having such a hard time with it. And I think... Um, if I was being honest with myself, you know, I, I've been a Christian for a long time. I'm used to living life as a Christian. I'm used to having those seasons of life where you feel really fueled by the gospel. Those other times where it's a bit harder, you know, I'm used to grappling with my sin more and more um, and repenting and, and asking God to change me. But I think what I'm not good at is actually seeing how God is answering those prayers of change in my life. I'm not good at taking the time out to sort of stand back and think, how is God? fulfilling his promise to bear fruit in my life beyond just kind of a trivial example here or there, which is still important. But, um, and so as I was thinking about it, I thought the way I'm going to answer the question is, and well, let me also say, I don't think I'm alone in that. I think a lot of us struggle to take the step back and see with fresh eyes how God is making us fruitful for him to his glory. And so I think the way I want to answer the question is not really by answering it, but by saying, I need other people to help me see that. I need people who know me well within my church family to help me see with fresh eyes what fruit God is bearing in my life as a follower of Jesus. Um, and I want to be able to do that with people too, because I don't think we're very good at it. And not in a look at me, aren't I great kind of way, but Danny, rejoice that this is how God is fulfilling his promise to you that he will bear fruit in your life. Um, and so my answer to the question is, for those of you who know me well, come and tell me um, how you think God is doing that um, and give me the opportunity to say uh, how I am seeing him do the same thing in your life. Mm -hmm. 
I really like that because, yeah, I actually do think it, it, yeah, it's just small ways God works in our lives over time. Um, But you've highlighted the importance that, yeah, this series of devotions is going to be is it is all about one another and yeah how we're a part of each other's lives and what that looks like so I actually think that's just a really helpful thing to point out so thank you for that I really appreciate it. It was an easy way for me not to answer a hard question. (laughs) (laughs) Well thank you so much for joining us today Danny that was yeah really helpful to hear your thoughts on yeah John 15. My pleasure I'm really looking forward to this series. Well, friends, I hope that you were encouraged um, by what Danny had to share with us today. Um, and also, please do continue to encourage one another with things that stood out to you from the Bible reading, from what Danny might have said, any thoughts or comments that you might have or questions. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, a great place to do that is in the comments section. Uh, but if you're watching it somehow else or listening to it, then continue to chat to one another, uh, text uh, your Bible study, chat about it. It'd just be really great over this. Yeah little series to continue to be able to speak to one another uh, God's word and encourage one another in that way. But let me wrap up our time together as I pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your son, the true vine. Lord, thank you that he has brought us in to a relationship with you. And, Lord, we pray that you would help us to remain in Jesus, the true vine, and that through that we might bear much fruit for your glory. Lord, we pray that as we come to know and love you more, that that might impact our relationships with one another. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.